Today, we're gonna to talk about five examples of visionary leaders. I am your host, Leah Demla, and you are listening to the Oracle On Purpose podcast, where we help intentional leaders clarify their purpose and next steps to create a work and life of significance. What does it mean to be a visionary leader? It means guiding others to their greatest selves to create a brighter future for all humanity. It also means taking a stand for something bigger than yourself and relentlessly taking action toward that vision's fulfillment. It means recognizing the inherent power within each individual to be not just double, but to be magnified exponentially when combined and committed to a unique and unified goal. It also means holding firm boundaries. So you have to hold your boundaries firmly. You have to set expectations for your partners, your team, and actually even for the people that you serve. Today, I wanna to share my five visionary leaders. Now, these are visionary leaders that I feel are always there to inspire me, to lead with compassion and hope and dignity for a brighter future for all of humanity and for all human beings. First, a man whose journey not only saved his own life, but transformed the entire lives of his countrymen and countrywomen, Nelson Mandela. You see, after years of spending time in a small prison cell in Robben Island, he was released in February 11th, 1990. And he went on to not only end apartheid, but he established a multiracial government. And in 1993, Mandela won the Nobel Prize, not to show off, but a year later, he also became South Africa's first black president. And his vision of hope not only inspired South Africans, it was a hopeful example of equality that inspired the entire world. Speaking of freedom, my next visionary leader found hers after giving voice to a caged bird song. You see, Miss Maya Angelou has long been a salve to my and millions of other black girls' broken spirit. She was a poet, an artist, a luminary figure, and an author. And for generations, she was a light at the end of the tunnel. Her vision of allowing girls to speak up, to find their voice, speak their peace, and recognize their magnificence as phenomenal women was a vision that I really am proud to carry a torch for today. Next, Tanara Burke, who was the woman that created the Me Too movement, is a fine example of a visionary luminary. She looked far beyond her own circumstances and helped to create a movement that transformed the lives of women across the world. In fact, the waves that have of change that she created, right? The ripple effect that she had not only allowed women across the globe to stand up and say me too, to voice for themselves that they had been victims of abuse, but to shift it from just that one statement to a defining cry, which was never again. And because of her work and the spotlight that she put onto those abusers out there, there were so many men and other perpetrators who were brought to justice because she had a vision of speaking out, of sharing this and, and putting it out in the spotlight, right? Taking all away the shame and the um, frustration and the loneliness and making sure women knew that they weren't alone, right? Not only women, but that the universe, the world knew we are not alone. Me too meant, I see you, I recognize you, I know what it's like. And that kind of vision, that kind of powerful voice, so clear, so, so true, right? Like such a true North allowed her to really capture the spirit of those people who had been affected by what was going on at the time. And, and it's like catching lightning in a bottle, right? 
being at the right time in the right moment and and finding that thing inside of you that grows so loudly you have to speak it and in speaking it she inspired others to do the same the beautiful thing about that particular visionary is it's someone who is you know here in modern times and there's there's just so many powerful amazing leaders right now rising up in that same vein maybe it's you maybe it's someone you know but really right now in this era we are called to be the visionary leaders that we are destined to be you know she opened up long dormant power centers for women across the globe and they could step out into the light and claim that and because of that others followed suit asking to be seen to be recognized to be heard to be valued no longer in the shadows that is true leadership inspiring others to stand up and to really hold the world accountable for doing better once you know better you can do better as my angela would say and that brings me back to someone who is one of my other inspirations and that is rosa parks now what i love right now is i live in a big city and when i live right downtown in the heart of the city i used to travel all over the place on public transit and when i first started using public transit i remember stepping through the door um, as the doors opened on one of the city buses and climbing on board and there was a smile on my face and also a feeling in my heart of this vibrancy of being in a city and using public transit and being able to sit wherever I wanted to travel and move about my city as an equal to others who were traveling and moving about the city, going to work and to play. We were all there together traveling along on the same bus. And I know that there's a huge wave now of people calling themselves to raise up against racial injustice and other injustices in the world. I also know that the foundation for that change, for the foundation for that battle cry, if you will, comes from people like Rosa Parks and others in that era who laid those heavy burdens down. They laid them down, they said enough. And because they did, we can also stand on that foundation and broaden that level of equality and experience of humanity, greater humanity, because of the women and people and visionaries like Rosa Parks. Now, some of you might think she's not a visionary. She was just a woman who was coming home from work and was tired. I'll challenge you this. Yes, but at that moment, she had a bigger vision, right? In her heart, there was a bigger vision for how life should be. And sometimes that's the subtlety of a visionary, right? It's the subtlety of enough is enough. The knowing somehow inside yourself that this is supposed to be, look, feel different, better, brighter, more hopeful, more engaged, more inclusive of the real breadth of humanity that we are. You see, a visionary sees the future in the present as the present potential, right? Looking around, like I said, seeing the potential, the possibility within those individuals. Just like Nelson Mandela, who when he did become president, he, he saw the potential of his people, all South Africans. He had that lens and it's not an easy lens to hold, but it is definitely a lens that visionary leaders have. It's the capacity to see things from a broader, higher perspective, right? And that brings me to the last person on my list and definitely not the last because of the least, but 
you know, she's been on my mind of late, so I wanted to add her to this list. And that is former First Lady Michelle Obama. She rounds out my list of the five visionary leaders that inspired me, not so much for all the incredible work that she did in the White House, which of course was phenomenal, but rather the work she continues to do today. You see, I see her out there in the media still, inspiring people across the country to show up and be bold and fight for their future, a future that makes a difference. Her inspiration and warmth, even willingness to poke fun at herself, right? Belie that incredible intelligence and grace that she's had to maintain, even in the face of ridicule and honestly, blind hatred. And as a woman of color myself, I know that it takes fortitude to have others put all that on you day after day and still show up. Show up with the heart of a leader to say, I can see those who are against me and I can see those who I'm for. And I'm for the masses. I'm for the people who are ready to make change. And here's the thing. Sometimes those people that we think are our enemy, what we're calling up in them, you know, that, that, that piece of them that's being triggered or targeted or challenged by who we are, there's an opportunity for them to look at what they really believe, to deal with that painfulness of discomfort and angst and anger or whatever comes up for them for themselves. So in truth, it's another way of leadership by just being truly aligned with who you are in a way that's really about the bigger vision and the bigger hope for humanity that allows people to make change. Not everyone, not everyone, right? In a specific demographic or geographic is one way or another. It's not black and white all the time. And to give that grace of recognizing that if she continues to stand in what she believes, then perhaps some of those people that used to be out there on the front line, you know, throwing her shade, as they say, could actually start to come around for whatever reason. Sometimes we don't even know what that reason might be, right? You could be the person who inspires someone else to look at their own shortcomings, their own lack or limitation values and beliefs. And maybe it's because you made them angry. You made them frustrated. And that's okay too. Because a real visionary leader understands they're not going to make everyone happy. And it's not really the goal. It's an improvement, right? It's an up leveling. And it's a way of looking at the world that we live in and saying there is so much potential for us to work together that it's worth all of that struggle. It's worth all of the pain and the frustration and the pitfalls that have come along the way to get where you are. And even during that time, right? During the time of calling people out to be bigger, to do bolder, brighter things with their lives and with the world, you might be chastised. You might be called weird. You might be labeled crazy. People who used to be your friends may turn away. And a true visionary leader understands that going in. It doesn't make it necessarily easier, right, to have those things happen to you, but it allows you to see from a higher vantage point that the end result, right, the goal, the vision itself is worth it. And like I said, maybe many months, many years, maybe even after you're gone, those same people, like those who share accolades and awards and 
you know, posthumously hold high esteem leaders like Rosa Parks, whose grandparents or maybe even their parents didn't approve. Maybe it would even happen then. You see, visionary leaders aren't born. They're made. They're made through the challenge and oppression and even tragedy. And it's because of these experiences, they're able to see the possibilities for more. Not just for themselves, but for all of us. To me, that really is the true mark of a visionary leader. The capacity to see the potential and limitless possibility in all people, in everyone. Now, it doesn't mean that that person doesn't fit on your team or deserve to be rewarded in your company or is a good client for you. Here's the thing, a real visionary leader will happily turn down clients that aren't for them because they believe in the potential of the client. They believe that the client can find a solution, right? Can find the resources they need and it's just not with you. And it takes seeing again, the biggest vision possible, not just for yourself, not just for your own business, but for each of the people whose lives your business touches. And when you're able to do that, when you're able to step up and over and higher into an idea of like, what is, what is your mission? Not just for the, the, the prosperity of your business, right? But for humanity, for people, for the world, with the service or product you are providing, what is it you want it to do? How do you want things to change? That goes back to understanding your unique life purpose. Because that piece, when sewn into everything you do, allows you to live at the level of a visionary leader. Because when you turn back to it again and again, you know that you are doing what's right for that vision. Yeah? And you begin holding on to that vision so strongly and clearly that it captures the imagination and inspiration of others. And in doing that, we change the world. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't yet, subscribe and ring the bell. And if you want to see more videos like this, click right here.